I delayed this video because some guys from GetFPV contacted me and they wanted to offer me just answer any of my questions that I might have had. And, and I asked if I could speak to the actual prop designer himself. And they said, absolutely. So I had a phone discussion with him and uh, Tim and... Um, we had a very nice discussion about prop design, and I learned of GetFPV's very, very humble beginnings in prop design. This is a company that really did it all entirely from scratch. They did not really have any help from anywhere. They hired Austin, which is their lead prop designer, straight out of school. He's an aeronautical engineer, and from the beginning, they asked him, you know, try to make a prop. And you know, I don't know if there's really any classes that can help with mini quad prop design, but he said that he had some good instruction in propulsion and he kind of used that to design some algorithms and predict what a good prop might be. So he designed the prop, they made him a, a mold, which is very expensive, a prop mold, stamped out their first few props, went out to test them, and it just didn't work. So when I say humble beginnings, I mean the humblest of beginnings in prop design. Since that day, they have invested in an extremely high-end 3D printer. It's the same 3D printer that I use in my professional work, which I'm a dentist, and I, and I um, 3D print a lot of surgical appliances and surgical devices that I use on a regular basis. So it's a very, very high-end 3D printer, which I would have a hard time believing other prop companies have a system that advanced. And they're pretty much, they, they have the ability to print off one prop at a time in its finished form, and it will... 80% of the time it will perform to its maximum potential in, as like the finished product would. That alone is a really, really big advantage for uh, any prop designer to have. So my next question with for Austin was, how much does the prop design actually change from your initial simulation? And his answer was very, very, very little, very, very little, which means that his, his algorithms predict pretty darn well what he wants the prop to work, what he wants the prop to feel like in the air and how he wants it to work in the air. So I didn't ask him this question, I forgot to ask him this question, but one thing that I think simulators probably have a really hard time figuring out is how a prop will actually feel and respond in the air. Because you know, having thrust numbers, efficiency numbers, and all this, this stuff is great, but at the end of the day, I personally fly the prop that feels the best to me in the air. I don't really pay as much attention to my thrust numbers and all those other, other um, metrics. But it's very interesting that this prop doesn't really change from inception to completion. And um, there are a number of props that he's working on that are going to come out in the near future, which are very interesting props, super interesting props that I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying because we've reached kind of like a new era in prop design and just design of all this stuff that we have. You all know that this stuff is progressing at, at a lightning pace. And so we finally have good motors, we have good props, we have good um, ESC systems, we have good flight controllers. Like it, it's reached kind of a golden era of mini quads. You can pretty much build one of these things and it just flies almost perfect first time out with no tuning, no touching anything. And there's really only about four or five groups of people in the world that have the ability to design a mini quad prop and have it work the way they intend it to work. Now, what was this prop designed for? Straight from Austin, he designed this prop for racing, and it was not designed to be particularly durable. It was designed to fly well. He, he designs for flight performance, not for durability. It just happened to give him an airfoil that was more durable depending on which polycarbonate they use. And the polycarbonate that they use on this prop, uh, as you may have realized, the past couple of Lumineer props that they have made used a weird mix of plastics and polycarbonates and what, whatnot that didn't really hold up as nicely as we would have liked. In particular, the um, butter cutters kind of fold and bend and break pretty easily. They also have this kind of raspy quality to them and they don't really have the best balance, but that's not because of the mold or, or the design. It's primarily because of the plastic that they use. It just it just wasn't the right plastic. And it took, a, it took them eight months to come up with it, to find the plastic that they wanted to use for this prop, which is all just testing. It's just testing. It's not like a, they can't really do much science on it and figure out, you know, what the best plastic is. It's really just, you got to test it and you got to see which one works the best. So this prop was designed for racing primarily, and it was designed to have very high static thrust, very high grip, and be efficient. It's a five pitch, or it's supposedly a five. There's no, there's no prop that really has a, a straight pitch all the way down the blade. It's, it's a dynamic pitch. You can, you can 
easily tell that the prop is very dynamic all the way down the blade. It's actually using four different airfoils down the blade, Austin tells me. And um, it, it just looks like such an optimized and advanced blade that it's just crazy. It looks like science to me, if, if, if science was to make a prop. Um, but how does it perform? So I don't race. I don't race. I don't race. I mean, I've raced a little bit and I race here and there, but I just, I'm just not a big racer. And I, so I don't really crash a whole lot because I'm not racing through tiny little cracks and holes. Yeah, I mean, I crash in acrobatics and I break props here and there, but I mean, I'll, I'll spend, you know, a dozen batteries on the same set of props without really hitting anything because I'm not really pushing the limits when I'm, when I'm flying around. For racing, you really do need really high durability because you're often running into people midair, you're often hitting gates, you're just bouncing off things, you're bouncing off the ground, rolling, whatnot. And so since the, since the Cyclone came out, since the day the Cyclone came out, it has been the most popular prop, period, racing or acro, that has ever existed. More than the 5x4x3, more than anything else. This prop probably sells orders of magnitude more than all the other props in existence combined. And there's a lot of reasons why. It's an extremely, it's the most durable prop we have today. And it's not just because it's super strong. It's because, I don't know, something about the way they designed this prop and the polycarbonate that they use just holds up so darn well. I mean, rarely, rarely will this prop crack a hub. It will fold up a blade. You can always fold it back, but even when it's folded up, you can still fly it around. It's an extremely durable blade, and that's that's why it's taken the crown for racing. It's also very, very fast, especially the 5046, which this is the 5050, but the 5046, which I personally think is particularly good for racing. So how does, how does the Gatebreaker stack up against the Cyclone, which is the prop that it's trying to stack up against? The Gatebreaker is very durable. Let's, I'm going to flex them for you so that you see, you can see in here. So the Gatebreaker is more flexible than the Cyclone. And then this is the 5152, which is probably the least flexible of the bunch. And it's not quite as durable as the uh, Cyclone, but it is extremely durable as well. These these two props are very, very similar in durability. But the, um, the 5152 is is more delicate in the sense that when you do fold up a blade or do something to it, it kind of gets out of whack easier than the Cyclone blade. The Cyclone blade is just like a freaking bulletproof blade. So what happened when I was start when I was flying the Gate Breaker? I did a couple rolls, I did a couple tumbles, you know, I just hit some stuff just <laughs> to see what would happen. Um, I ran into a tree and I did crack one hub out of the, um, I, I only broke one prop. I, I rolled it a bunch of times and I didn't even bend the blade. So this prop is super resilient to rolls. I mean, if you run into people, it's probably not going to do anything. And the, the plastic, the polycarbonate, it's it's hard to really, you know, convey what it feels like. kind of feels like more rubbery than plasticky and, and like, it just doesn't feel the same as the Cyclone or the 5152. It feels like it's more resilient. It feels like it's going to hold up to, you know, flexes and bends and knocks better. And I, I didn't, I didn't bend a single prop when I, when I was rolling around. That being said, I did speak to a couple people that that do race, and one in particular, Justin Skinner, is probably going to come out with a review saying that it's <laughs> the least durable blade because he actually cracked uh, like dozens of blades at the hub. But he's also flying around in his backyard, and he's knocking into stuff pretty close by. So here's here's my... It's really hard to decide or just to explain what the durability of this prop is. But here is my best kind of explanation of it. The prop is super stiff in the middle half. If you're going to hit something in the middle half, all of that... The prop doesn't flex in the middle half. All of that, that power, all the force is going to be distributed directly to the hub, and you're probably going to break the hub. So it's a super durable prop. I wouldn't put it on the same scale as the Cyclone. It's close, but it's not on the same scale as the Cyclone. And you will probably break the hub. Whereas on the Cyclone, you will probably just fold the blade and bend the blade up. And uh, breaking the hub, it means the prop is dead. It means you're not gonna you're not gonna finish the race. It's just not. You're just gonna explode if you try to take off again. So I mean, it, it really, time will just tell. You people are gonna have to fly it and see what it's like. So let's now discuss what it feels like. So this prop, it. First and foremost, sounds like a vacuum cleaner. It sounds kind of awesome because it's a vacuum cleaner. And uh, vacuum cleaners, the reason they sound the way they do is because they have a very high static uh, pressure that they're creating. And I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm relating that sound 
of this prop to that very high static pressure that it produces. And definitely, when you put this prop on your quad, you will feel kind of this artificial sense of, you know, low throttle, just power. You just feel this low throttle push that you just don't get with the with the Cyclone 5050 or anything else. It's a very unique sensation, and that's that kind of low throttle push that you get really does help you pull through turns, and if you do like hairpin turns or 180s, it really just, just bounces back in the opposite direction. Now, when I'm flying around, I didn't have my camera tilt high enough, it was about 40 degrees, and if I was gonna race, I'm gonna push my camera up to about 60 degrees, and it'll give me that ability to just you know push back in the opposite direction, just bounce off the turn, uh, and this prop is gonna be really good at that. How it's different compared to the Cyclone 5046, it draws about the same amps, roughly the same amps, really hard to decipher which one's drawing more or less amps. Overall, you're gonna get the same flight time. The prop control is a little bit more dull than the Cyclone 5046, just a hair. It's, it's the, the Cyclone blades have this kind of distinct, crisp, sharp feel to them. This prop does not have that distinct, sharp feel to it. But I personally think that that's a good thing for racing because you don't want to have your quad be super duper twitchy and you know sharp and crazy in there. You want it to feel like you're driving a bus through this <laughs> through this track at a blistering speed. And that's kind of what the prop does feel like. This is a it's a very interesting prop because you're really just gonna have to try it and see what you think about it. And in time, people will say whether it's a um, it's a durable enough prop for racing or not. But for the most part. It's a prop that's interesting because it really does feel good in the air and it does have a chance at matching the Cyclone and the 5152, which I personally think are the two most prominent racing blades today. Last but not least, this prop has a very special trick up its sleeve that you will all thank GetFPV for wholeheartedly because it will make your life so much easier and it's an actual revelation in, in props of all sorts and you will see it very very soon if the crossfire is the product of a year or the most the most innovative product that i've used since starting mini quads this would be the next most innovative change because it's going to make your life so much easier and uh yeah you'll see it very much and it's going to be coming from all prop designers all prop manufacturers will be will be adopting this innovation and change don't forget to floss try the prop if you like Bye-bye.